Okay. So how's the homework three going for you guys? Have you guys started? Okay, good luck. Uh, so it's due next Friday. Just don't forget. Uh, and just want to remind you again for midterm two, as I said before, we will include um, fecal. Uh, how do I put it? So we will really get in the computer lab and then test you on um, programming with SQL. Okay? Um, I'm still thinking about it. Yeah, la last time I was reflecting myself. Like so many people got 100, so I was like, did I make things too easy? Yeah, we should aim for the normal distribution. <laughs> Let me think about it. I think, I think I'll let you guys have references, but just depends on how big the reference can be. All right. Um, so let's continue SQL programming today. Um, if you haven't done so, if you need to uh, connect to your my SQL server, you can do it now. Uh, if you want to write it on a slide, it's totally cool as well. And uh, give you some time to do that. And today, a bit different, I include the instances. I realized last time I didn't do that, so it's harder for you to kind of go back and check what the answer of each query will be. Today, I just put it on the first slide, so we can keep. Yeah, referring back to. It. And one more thing before we start. Um, what do you guys think of yesterday doing the presentation in the evening? Was it like really exhausting? Also, it's okay. Okay. I'll think about next time. I think we can try to take two extra time just to do the two parts. But I just feel like we will lose some extra time. So. I'll think about it okay, for the final presentation. Final presentation might be really fun, though. It will be like demonstration. Okay, a little more food. Okay, so if you're ready, let's talk, uh, take a look at query two. Um. Last time we sort of stopped at the point we were talking about nested queries, if you remember. So for this query too as well, you want to achieve it by doing nested queries. Okay. So let's think about it from the perspective of relation algebra first. Okay. So to find the names of sellers who have reserved a red vote, one of the easiest ways we could do how many of the tables do you think will be involved? You want the names of the sellers who have reserved a red vote. So that will involve out of the three, how many? <coughs> Anyone? We want the names. So names come from sellers, and the reserve information comes from reserves. How about the color? Come from the both, right? So to do it in relation algebra, one of the easiest and most intuitive way is to um, just directly join three tables together. And eventually we take the selection on uh, Selection on the boat's color that is red, and we do projections. We just want the S. Okay, so this is one way of doing the emulation of. I guess I'm not missing anything. So if you look at here, the first thing that we'll do is to join all three right here, right? In just this part itself, you can sort of identify the unnecessary stuff that we're generating in the middle of it. Because if we do this, it will include all of the columns, and sellers, all of the columns and reserves, and all of the columns and votes. Okay. 
When we first started in relation to algebra, we were thinking about what are the ways that we can make things a lot more efficient, or we would say generate less intermediate results, intermediate tables in the process. So one of the ways is to identify here, and we can just do a selection of both first. Right? We can just select the red button first. So that shrinks the whole table, and later when you join them, it's a lot smaller. Other stuff we can do is, after you select the red votes, you can do a projection and only take out the vote ID, because that's all we need to refer to the results information. Okay? And after that, we can only uh, we can project only the SID out, and that will help us navigate to say there's a given name. Okay, so one way to rewrite it. This will lead us to the next query that we will try out later. So one way to rewrite it, as I said earlier, we can actually first start from taking the both. That's we only want red ones. Okay? So you take out the red votes. And as I said before, at this part we only need the vote ID. So we take out the vote ID. And this is an intermediate result, so we can use what to store it. Remember? If we want to store, like in the middle there we have some results, we want to store in this name. So we use rename it. Okay? So we can do that, the first thing. And the second thing we can do is taking this intermediate result, take a join with results. We know we can do so because here it includes the BID. So we are doing a natural join of a schema with only BID and this BID, SID, and say, okay. And until this point, after we join them, we say we only want the SID. Because that's what will lead us to the sailor table to retrieve the name thing up. And we can keep going, rename it further into temp two. Okay. And so far, right now, if you look at here, we've actually got the SIDs of the sellers who have reserved red votes. But because for query two, we want the name. So what we can do, just by simply taking temp2 with sellers, and for the very last thing, we simply say I want the S name of it. Okay, so then you get the result. Right? That's one way of rewriting this uh, for curry two, instead of writing in the way in the first way. So I'll say this is a perfect one. Okay, so how would we do that in SQL? What do you think we should do? Do we want to do it in terms of nested work? So what we can do, if you're writing on the paper, leave some space at the top first. So what we can do is actually let's handle the first step in approach two first. So that would be, um, okay, let me write this down first, and you can think about how we will fill it out. Okay, if we want to start from this set of select from where, to handle the first line that we wrote for approach two, what do you think we should do? What would be in the front clause? Let's start from the easiest. Just the boats, right? So just the votes, okay? How about the select clause? What do we want? What is the thing that we do the projection of? The ID, yeah. Okay, so what's the criteria? What are the things, what are the rows we want to keep? That's the one we do the selection, right? What is it? 
We want the red bows. Color. Okay, so for this it only, then we will get um, the boat's ID that um, are color red. Okay. And just to remind you again, in SQL, when we say select, is actually the projection we learned in relation to Okay, and in relation to algebra, the selection is actually the where clause. Okay, a little bit confused. Just don't get confused. Okay, so until here, we can think of these three lines as the t, uh, the temp one we store right there. Okay, that's the intermediate result. So we want to move on and join the whole thing with reserved information. So I'll show you how to do this part first. Okay, so we also have a select from where. Okay, and let's put this inside parenthesis first. So we say it will be an inner query in terms of, uh, regarding to this outer query. So if you look at the second line, we want to leverage the inner query, join it with the reserves table, and do a projection of just this. So what we can do is we know for the outside we want the reserves. So the from class has reserve table, right? Reserves R. And then for select part, that's where we do the projection in relation to algebra. That's where we want the SID only. So you say we select R.SID. Okay. Okay. How about the where clause? <coughs> what do you think we should do? When you do the natural join between temp1 and reserves, it's comparing the, one, um, the fields where they have the same name. And you think of it, the field they have the same name is the ID. Okay? So the natural join is actually equivalent to comparing whether they, they're uh, both tables, the ID, are the same values. So what we can do right here is actually like this. You can say where R dot B I D is in here. Okay? So if you take a look at here, because the inner inner query actually generate um, just one column with all the BID, okay? So for the outer part, when you do the comparison, you can just say the criteria are set to be RBID in one of these, okay? So this will achieve until the second line for approach two. So far, so good. So for these six lines, we're actually the temp two, the renaming we did temp two. So now you know how we can do the next query. How would you do for the very last step? Also select. <coughs> what would you do? Let's put this into parentheses first. Let's start from the front plot. That's the easy one. What will be in the front plot? And what um, will be the where clause? Mm -hmm. Yeah, SID in. Okay. And the easy part, select is the projection we did in the end. So that will be what do we want eventually? The name. Yeah. Okay, so well that's that. The whole query. So um, I mentioned last time when when we use the MySQL show shell we use, um, it doesn't allow us to use tab for indication. So what you can do is just do spaces. Okay. So yeah, if this makes it clearer, I think that helps to understand it. So when we think of it conceptually, we actually start from the most inner part. Take the thing we want and then we keep going and keep going. Okay. Let's take a look. It should work. Um, and try it in our shell. Just here. Okay, so that gives you the answer. 
look at what actually happened behind all these. Okay. So the conceptual evaluation for uh, nested queries, when we think of it logically, we actually think of it starting from the most inner, inner query, right? inner part. We think that it's easier to think. But actually, when your query is being evaluated, it actually starts from the outside. Okay? It starts from the outer part, and then for every outer part, it computes the inner query. So it's like the for loop. Okay? For every time it checks whether the inner part is correct, and recursively apply this process to a further inner part. Um, in our query. Okay. So, so far, for um, the nested query, if we take a look at this one we just wrote down, okay. if we take a look at here, actually for every inner part, for all of the where clause, it's completely independent to the outer part. Right? If we take a look here, we only care about what's happening in both. Here, we only care about what's happening in reserves. We don't really correlate that with the outer part. So actually, SQL allows you to do a correlation between the inner query and the outer query. Okay? So what it means is that, right here. Okay? So in general, the inner subquery could, depend, uh, could be dependent on the row currently being examined in the outer query. And I'll show you how we, what we can do practice this. So let's go back to query one. Anyone still need this? Or delete it? Okay. So for query one, we go back to query one again. We have practiced it for quite a few times. It is where we want to find the names of sellers who have reserved both number one or three. Okay. So I'll show you how we can achieve this one by doing a correlated nested query. So, to start with, uh, because we want to find the names of sellers, of course, we start from select s that is name, okay? <coughs> and then it's from sellers. So now it's the interesting part. So we want to use a keyword, I think we didn't use it last time, it's called exists. Okay? So until this part, before we could, before we move on, we are basically saying from the sellers table, I want to select the S name, where these tuples actually exist. Okay, then we keep going. So what exists? We can select all of the information from the reserves table. Okay, where. Um, the BID is equal to one or three, and then the SID is equal to the SID outside. Did this, does this make sense to you? Yeah, so it, as you can see here, after the outer query, when we get into the inner query, we actually don't have to worry about what are the uh, columns we want to select. We just select all of them, right? But when we examine it, the criteria we are looking into in the inner query is that not only we want the boat ID to be 103, but also the SID in R is equal to the SID in S, where the S is comes from the outer query. Okay, so this is how we do it in the correlated. For the idea, put it as string. I'm not sure. Let's try it out. Okay, so right here. Yeah. Okay, so this is how we will achieve for um, correlation in the nested query. So basically, you're just saying, yeah. You want the, the slide? Oh, it's actually here. Okay. So as you can see right here, right here, the SID right here, 
actually depend on um, the S from outside. Okay? So this is what we can do. <coughs> All right. Next, let's take a look at um, more set comparison operations. So, um, until now, we have learned about union, and we know we can't actually do intersect in MySQL, even though it's in the SQL uh, definition. But last time we tried out, if we don't have intersect, how can we achieve by doing where in? Okay. So, let's take a look at some set comparison operators we can use. The first one will be unique. I don't think we will um, practice it today. But just remember, if you use unique, it means it will return true if no duplicates in the test is set or the test is set is empty. Okay. The other two more interesting uh, one is any and all. I think I just briefly talked about it last time. So for any, it's saying compare to at least one of the tuple in the set. Okay. And for the op operator here, you can do either less than, less or equal to, equal to, or this is the non equal to. In my, in my SQL, right? So it's comparing to at least one of them. And for this one, it's actually comparing to all of the, the tuples in the set. So if you think of it in terms of in and not in, when we say in, the definition will be equivalent to equal to any of it. Okay, when we compare something in a set, so as long as one of them is the same. Okay, so these two are equivalent. But when we look at not in, not in is actually definition equivalent to not equal to all of the things in the set. Okay, so when you look at a set, actually none of it can be equal. So then the not in will be true. Make sense? Okay, so these are the set comparison operations we can use. Let's take a look at um, Pro 22 where we want to find sailors whose rating is better than some sailor called Karasha, what would you do? Before I move on, I want you to think about it first. How would you achieve query 22? Do you think we'll be using nested query here? Yeah. <coughs> so for nested query, what would be the thing you think we should put in the inner query? If we look at... <laughs> yeah, we want the sailors whose rating... Uh, we want to select the sailor's rating. Right? And with the name, that's Harasha. So what would you do for the inner part? Let's say we have select... What are the things we're selecting? So Cox said rating. Okay. We want to select the rating from sailors people. Whose rating do we want? We'll take a look at the query and say we want to find sailors whose rating is better than some sailor called Harasha. <coughs> so for that who, we only want the sailors with name Harasha. Right? So we can say when the name is actually in Harasha. This is the inner query we want. So it will return the ratings of the sailors who have named Harasha. Okay, that's the first step. And when, you, when we look back to the query, we want to find sailors whose rating is better than some of these people. Okay? So what you can do is like this. We can say we want to select, select from, yeah. and this time we also want to select from sailors table, however, S is already taken in the inner query. So what you will need to do is to make it another name. So we can say S2 or something. It doesn't matter. So we want to select the name um, in more ID. ID. From here, where 
where the rating is better, better than any of them, right? So you can say where the rating is actually greater than any of them. That would do. Make sense? Okay, so right here is how you would do the set of parameters, just simply by using greater. So here it also makes sense because we are comparing rating, like comparing between the rating. Okay, you can't do rating. You can, maybe you can do rating larger than major, but it just logically doesn't make sense. So if we take a look at the <coughs> instance, before we put it into the query, let's think about what kind of answer will we get. So because here we want to find sailors whose rating is better than some sailors called Harasha. So you take a look first, for the inner part, the first thing we did was actually to identify whose name is Horatio, right? And we actually found two, right here, right? This is the first Horatio, this is the second Horatio. And the first Horatio has a rating of seven, the second Horatio has a rating of nine, okay? So for the outer query later on, Whoever that will satisfy the um, criteria of having rating greater than any of them means as long as it's greater than seven, then that will work. Okay? So then you can imagine it will return lots of them. We will return uh, sailor 29, uh, sailor 31, 32, 58, 71, and 74. All these will be correct. Okay. <coughs> So these are the sailor ID that will satisfy such criteria. So this is how we can use the set operator. So just do a little tweak on que uh, query 23. When we take a look at query 23, we want to find sailors whose rating is better than every sailor called Horatio. Okay. So how, what would you do by just very simply modify from here? And need to all, right? All, correct? That's it. Yeah. That's for query 23. So when we go back to take a look at here, you can see because Horatio is have rating seven and another Horatio has rating nine. So this one, because we want to be greater than all of them, so all of the one that eventually we satisfy has to have a rating greater than nine. Okay, so you can expect the answer this time will only be sailor 58. And 71. Right. Let's take a look. Greater than all. Yep. Okay, so that's that. So that's the subtle difference between any and all. Well, not the subtle difference. When you think of it, it's subtle, but there we go. Okay. So before we move on, let's quickly think about what this is actually equivalent to <coughs> that we will try out later, okay? So actually, greater than all just simply means actually in the inner query. Later, I'll, I'll tell you guys how we can do it, but you can actually take a maximum out of both first, right? Because we were saying greater than all, so as long as it's greater than the maximum, then that's true, right? And for greater than any, as long as it's greater than the minimum. So I'll show you how it's like later when we learn about aggregation. So let's take a look at slide 10. Um, we will want to find the names of sellers and have reserved all of those. So this is actually um, when we recall what we learned in relation to algebra. What are what is the operator you use if you want to do such thing? Find all votes, like the sailors who have reserved all votes. What's the operator? Division. division, right? Yeah. So by doing division, we can find uh, sailors who have reserved all votes. So it's just simply you take division between sailors and reserves, okay. and we just have to be careful about the schema to so make sure the x, y, and y. But here, actually, in SQL, we don't have such thing. 
Okay, we don't have division. So to think of it in another way, we can actually do it in the way that we think of it in negation. Okay, so here we want to find the names of sellers who have reserved all boats. One way of achieving this is actually we can think of it as for each sailor, we check that there is no boat that has not been reserved by this sailor. Make sense? I'll type it down. You can think of it how we would do this. So it's for each sailor, for each sailor, we check that there is no um, boat that has not Okay, so if we want to do it this way, think about how we would do it in C. You think we'll be needing this temporary? <coughs> Seems like it, right? We kind of need this occur for this one. So, um, how many how many um, layers do you think we need for each sailor? Which of the boats, and that has not been done. Just take a guess. Two or three. <laughs> okay, let's start from the outer part. Let's work on it together. Okay. Let's say, the first sentence we say for each sailor, okay, and because we find eventually we want the name, so let's do it really quickly, this is the easy part, okay, select from where? For each sailor, so it's from what table? It's from the sailor's table, right? Because we want a name, so we just select S.S. name, right? So here's the tricky part. We check that there is no boat that has not been reserved by this sailor. So what we can do actually is to say where not exist. Okay, so far it seems really weird, but then we'll move on and see what is it checking. Okay. So we want to select sailor's name from the sailor's table where it actually doesn't exist something, something, something. Okay, so what is the something we want to check? We want to check that there is no boat that has not been reserved by this sailor. So the first thing we want to do is to do the boat. Okay, we select the boat ID, of course, from the boat people. Okay. Where the boat ID, okay, again, it's not in. What do you think will be the last table we use? <coughs> the reserves. Okay. So I'll show you how it's like. So here we are saying where the BID is not in the reserves table. So it's not in um, the BID from R. Where, okay, so here the interesting thing is we use the correlation actually. So we actually do it all the way like this. Okay, so the reason it makes sense is right here, so far from the outer query, and we go all the way to the inner query, kind of just follow the logic we wrote down. Right? And you can see eventually this is where the correlation happens. We just link it all the way back to the outer curve. Okay? So from the outside to the inside, let's take a look how it works. So we first we want to we say we want to select the S name from the seller table where 
There's no such tuples in the nested query, uh, in the inner query that will make the SNP happen. So we then went in to check in the inner query where we start right by selecting the vote ID, and we don't want any vote ID that is not reserved by the savers. Okay? So actually, if you only take a look at these two, it gives you the vote ID that is not preserved by this sailor. Right? So eventually go back if a sailor that doesn't have any of those votes, then we can say the sailors have reserved all of the votes. Okay? So the sailors that will eventually <coughs> be returned will only be those that has an empty set. Okay? So because ex for exist, when we use exist, we are just checking whether there is such thing that will make this happen. Okay? I think this is the hardest one out of all the queries we will. Okay, and only sailor dust have reserved all of the rules. Alright? Any question for this one? Yeah. So if you're selecting S.S name, mm -hmm. how does it know that is it S name does not exist in the oh, um, When we don't put any of those names, that's the whole top one. Okay. So the tuple actually include the SID, that's why here it gets complicated. Okay. Yeah? All right. Ready to move on to aggregation or more questions? Okay. So after this one, I think all the rest of the queries are actually really easy. But very useful as well. <coughs> Let's take a look at... Here, slide 11. Let's take a look at the aggregation we can actually do in SQL. So remember, uh, before we finish relation and algebra, we were learning an operator that will help us do aggregation, and that is which operator? We can do grouping, and we can compute. Count, sum, average. The alpha, right? The alpha operator, that's the one we use. Okay, so in SQL, we can also do aggregation. Okay. So before we talked about group, grouping, uh, let's just quickly talk about these um, aggregation functions we can use. So we can do count, we can do summation, we can do average, maximum, and minimum. And just note that for count, sum, and average, we can all do a distinct out of those. So right here, the first one is counting um, the rows of the uh, column, right? So if you take a distinct, it's just saying we turn it into a set first, okay? We only talk about how many distinct values are in there. And some can also do a distinct, average can also do a distinct. But maximum and minimum, even though when you do distinct, there will be no error, it doesn't make sense, right? It's kind of an extra step to do distinct when you take maximum and minimum, right? So that's just what you can note. You can put distinct, but it's just not helping anything. So let's take a look at query 25. Really easy. We want to find the average age of all sellers. What would you do? Do you think we need the where clause? Do we want to find the average age of all sellers? <coughs> no, we don't need the where clause for this one because we are not filtering out any couples in the sellers table. Okay, we want the average age of all sellers, so of course, uh, for the from clause, it will be sellers. So what are we selecting? The average age. So what we can do here it's just simply this. That's it. That gives you the average age of all sellers. So let's just take a look at whether it works. 
in this case. That's the average age. <coughs> All right. How about query 26? So 25 is really easy. How about 26? Still very easy. We want to find the average age of sellers with a rating of 10. Yeah, we just need to add a where clause, right? So based on this one, we add a where clause. Where what? Uh, rating equal to 10. Right? That's it. Then you got query 26. Okay? Easy breezy. We want to find the average age of sales with a rating of 10. So then let's just try it out. next one. It gets a tiny bit harder where we want to find the name and age of the oldest sellers. Think about what you would do. So what actually happens is, by doing that, you're saying, I'll select the name, all right? So actually, SQL selects all of the names right here. And then you say, I, I get the maximum of the age, and it gets here. And because it has, only has one value, so you just make it all the way up, it gives you just one row, okay? So that would be the wrong approach if we do it this way. So what do you think we should do? How can we fix it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we need some kind of where. Uh, yeah, we need some kind of where and some kind of nested. Okay. So let's change it up. Let's remove this thing here because um, all it asks for is the name. Okay. Where this person's age, right? So here's the interesting part. We can actually do equal to right here. Even though when we talk to our relation algebra, it <coughs> tells you everything that we return is a table, so we shouldn't have a value directly compared to a table. Okay? But in SQL, it allows you to do so because that makes things easier. Right? So I'll show you how it's like. So here, you're basically saying, then I just select um, the maximum age from just be, be careful that we can't have um, the two sellers having the same variable name, a range variable name. So that's why one we use, that's when we use S2. Okay? So here what we did is we want to select the S name from the seller's table where the seller's age is actually equal to the maximum age among all of the sellers. That's it. Okay? So as I said earlier, when we learn about relation algebra, I keep telling you guys, do not just compare directly with the table. But SQL allows you to do so when what you select eventually can be just a single value. Then when you do such comparison, it will know that you're comparing between H and just a value, okay, instead of a table. So, is 
we do this, we will expect um, the answer to be false, right? Like we saw earlier. So let's try it out. Yeah. Okay, so this is the correct one.
Um, I will mostly be there, but it's, the TA will definitely be there. Okay, see you on Monday.